Chicken and waffles don't have to be just a treat you get out at brunch with your friends. This portable sandwich is so easy, you'll wonder why you've never made chicken and waffles at home before. Simply mix together cayenne, paprika, garlic powder, sugar, and peanut oil in a small saucepan and heat it over medium just until the sugar dissolves. Toss the sauce with warm fried chicken tenders and place it on a waffle. I heated up these frozen Belgian style waffles in my toaster. This was so quick and easy and so delicious. I have a secret ingredient in my grits and my guess is you're probably not already using it. The secret ingredient, milk or chicken stock, depending on what type of grits you're making. Most instructions for grits call to cook them only in water, adding butter and salt at the end. But water is flavorless and if that's a liquid your grits soak up, your grits will be flavorless too. Next time you make them, sub half of the water for milk or chicken stock, which is especially tasty for shrimp and grits. And let me know if I completely shook up your grit game. Whoever said grits had to be savory? These will change your mind. In the South, we like our grits cheesy and our oatmeal sweet, but this recipe changes the game. Cook one cup of regular grits with four cups of water, one cup of whole milk, and some salt. Once they're cooked, stir in plain Greek yogurt, butter, and honey. Top it with a dollop of seedless blackberry jam, fresh blackberries, and some toasted almonds. I love to drizzle the berries and nuts with a little more honey because it's pretty and delicious. At first, I was skeptical of these sweet grits, but one bite changed my mind how to make the best ever scrambled eggs. Whisk your eggs for a full minute. Melt a good amount of butter over medium low heat in a 10 inch nonstick skillet and add your eggs. Keep the eggs moving the whole time. Season with salt at the end. Doing at the beginning will only cause them to be rubbery. These are so light and fluffy. Y'all wanna know the trick to the perfect fluffy omelet? Bet you can guess. Start out with three large eggs and whisk them really well, probably for about a full minute. Then my secret weapon for the fluffiest omelet is pretty easy to guess, baking soda, just a pinch. Whisk that in well, then heat butter in a nonstick skillet over medium low heat. Make sure the skillet is really nonstick. Once the butter is melted, pour in your eggs and immediately start agitating them with a spatula. Keep the eggs moving, being sure to bring the cooked edges into the middle. Keep doing this until almost all the eggs are cooked, then spread any runny parts to fill in the holes. Sprinkle with whatever you want and then fold. Tilt the skillet over the heat to finish cooking any runny edges, then tilt the omelet into a plate. Top it with whatever your heart desires and bon appetit. The secret to soft, medium, and hard boiled eggs is all in the timing. Bring water to a boil and gently add the eggs. Some might crack while they're cooking and it's totally fine. Timing for each stage varies. Six minutes for soft, nine for medium, and 12 for hard is my preferred method. Just be sure to immediately put the eggs in an ice bath and your timer goes off to stop them from cooking. Peel them when they're cool enough to handle. I find it's easiest to roll the eggs on a counter to loosen the shells. I love soft and medium eggs with salt, pepper, and Dijon or on salads, but hard make the best deviled eggs. Did you know you could deep fry deviled eggs? Fill a pot with water and add in baking soda, of course. The baking soda helps make the eggs easier to peel. Boil them for 12 minutes, then chill in ice water and peel. Cut the eggs in half and make your filling any way you like it. I made mine super simple with mayo, mustard, relish, salt, and pepper, but you can put in whatever you like. Batter the egg whites in flour, egg, and panko and fry until golden and crisp. It took me about a minute and a half to two minutes. Fill with filling and enjoy the crunchy deliciousness. Like any good breakfast recipe, it starts with cooking bacon. Remove it from the skillet, then make the most decadent grits of your life by adding butter to the bacon drippings with milk and cooking your grits with the bacon drippings. I mean, come on. After the grits are cooked through, let them stand for 10 minutes, then stir in cheddar cheese and let it stand for 10 more before whisking in one egg to help sturdy it up. Pour your grits into the bottom of a greased nine inch springform pan, then bake until set. Sprinkle with more cheddar, then whisk up your quiche layer of eggs, half and half cream and green onions. Pour that over the melted cheese layer and add in some of your cooked bacon. Bake at 325 for about an hour and 15 minutes, then let stand before slicing. Top with more bacon, of course, and enjoy. Everyone's obsessed with everything bagel seasoning, so I turned it into a casserole, of course. Start by cooking one pound of breakfast sausage in a skillet. Transfer to a grease 9 by 13 baking dish, leaving drippings in skillet. Tear four everything bagels into one inch pieces, then add them to the skillet with butter and toast. Add bagels to sausage and then whisk together cream cheese, whole milk, eggs, hot sauce, salt and pepper, green onions, and white cheddar cheese. Pour mixture over bagels and sausage, then toss everything together to combine. Let stand 30 minutes at room temperature before baking at 375 for about 30 minutes. Sprinkle with everything seasoning and more green onions before serving. Y'all need to make this tater tot breakfast casserole. I mean seriously, plus it is so easy. 
Layer a 32 ounce bag of frozen tots in a greased baking dish. Then pour over a mixture of 12 eggs, half a cup of whole milk, four ounces of shredded Monterey Jack, salt and pepper. Top with cheddar cheese, then bake at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. Then garnish with cooked crumbled bacon and green onions. Personally, I think a little ketchup would also be good. Brunch just got so much better. Hot take on biscuits and gravy from this southerner, it's not my favorite breakfast dish. But this biscuits and gravy casserole changed my mind on that. All the biscuits and gravy I've had before this were sort of bland and mushy. But what I loved about this one is that it's totally the opposite of that. The gravy has pepper jack cheese in it, so it's packed full of flavor. And the biscuits are baked on top of the cheesy sausage gravy. So the tops are golden, crisp, and not mushy. Even recording this voiceover makes me want to make it again. Three words, y'all. Cinnamon roll pancakes. You heard me. These pancakes are the ultimate food mashup. To make the cinnamon roll-esque filling, you'll need to mix up cinnamon, light brown sugar, and room temperature butter. Put that into a piping bag or Ziploc bag and snip the corner. Then whisk together your powdered sugar, vanilla, and milk for the glaze and set it aside while you make your pancake batter, which is pretty standard. Heat your nonstick skillet or griddle over medium and add about a third cup of batter to the griddle. Then pipe the cinnamon sugar filling in a spiral on top of your pancake. After lots of bubbles appear, give it a flip and cook for a couple more minutes on medium low before flipping onto a plate and drizzling with your glaze. Um, yum. Why go for a latte when you can have pumpkin spice pancakes? That's right, you heard me. These are pretty much just as easy as regular pancakes and only require two extra ingredients to get that classic pumpkin spice flavor. Mix flour, brown sugar, baking powder, baking soda, of course, and salt with pumpkin pie spice and pumpkin puree. Add in buttermilk and eggs and whisk until just combined. The batter should be lumpy. Heat up a griddle or a nonstick pan and cook them just like you would regular pancakes. Top with your favorite toppings and enjoy. I'm going to show you my favorite easy and versatile granola recipe. Combine four cups rolled oats, three cups crisp rice, one cup unsweetened coconut, and one cup mixed nuts and seeds. Add half a cup of brown sugar, three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda, and two full teaspoons of kosher salt. Combine half a cup of honey or maple syrup, a half a cup of nut butter, and a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Stir well and add to dry ingredients, stirring to make sure all dry ingredients are well coated. Transfer to a parchment paper lined baking sheet and spread evenly. Transfer to a 325 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes, opening the oven and stirring every 10 minutes. This ensures that the granola cooks evenly and some parts don't brown more than others. Transfer warm granola to mixing bowl and add in one cup of your favorite mixed dried fruit. Enjoy with some milk, yogurt, or by itself. Y'all, stop paying over $4 for a cup of cold brew. This is how you make it at home. Start by coarsely grinding your beans. You can do this yourself at some grocery stores if you don't have a grinder at home. Stir together a cup of grinds with two cups of water, cover and let sit for 12 to 18 hours at room temperature. Strain well. This is concentrated cold brew, so you'll need to mix the coffee with equal parts water. Add ice and your milk of choice or drink it black if that's more your speed. Enjoy the caffeine buzz. I'm gonna show you how to make homemade chai tea. Begin with seven whole cardamom pods, one two inch piece of fresh ginger, one cinnamon stick, and five whole cloves. Crush the ball at the end of each clove and add the cloves to the pot. Slice each cardamom pod in half, exposing the seeds inside each cardamom pod. Add all of the sliced cardamom pods to the pot. Next, add the cinnamon stick. Then crush and press your ginger and add that to the pot as well. Pour in three cups of filtered water and bring to a boil over medium heat for 10 minutes. Add four black tea bags and allow to boil for another three to five minutes. Sweeten your chai to taste, I used a quarter cup of sugar, and stir to dissolve. Next, add one cup of whole milk or whatever milk you prefer and bring to a boil before straining and pouring into a cup. This chai can be enjoyed hot or cold, making it perfect to your brown. Craving pumpkin spice coffee? This is how to make the creamer at home. Combine two teaspoons pumpkin pie spice with a quarter cup each of brown sugar and pumpkin puree in a small saucepan. Cook until the sugar dissolves, then stir in two cups of half and half. Chill until ready to use. It'll last about two weeks in the fridge, so you can get your hashtag PSL on without breaking the bank. This pound cake really lives up to its name. 
The OG pound cake recipe called for a pound of each butter, sugar, flour, and eggs. This recipe for our million dollar pound cake is similar to the very first recipes from France and England because it uses close to a pound of each ingredient. But unlike the OG recipes, we added milk for flavor and a lighter texture. A lot of baked goods rely on chemical leavening from baking powder or soda to rise in the oven, but most pound cakes don't include these ingredients. Instead, we cream butter and sugar for several minutes, beating air into the batter to make it light and fluffy. We're not exactly sure where the name million dollar pound cake came from, but we do know when you eat it, you'll feel like a million bucks. For a southern breakfast, definitely on the sweeter side, I'm going to show you how to make chocolate gravy. In a cast iron skillet, whisk together one cup of granulated sugar, a quarter cup of cocoa powder, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and a pinch of kosher salt until well incorporated. Slowly whisk in two cups of whole milk until well combined. Transfer skillet to medium heat and stir constantly until the gravy thickens to the consistency of a thin pudding, about six to eight minutes. Remove from heat and add four tablespoons of cubed butter, stirring until the butter melts and the gravy becomes smooth and glossy. This gravy is delicious on anything from pancakes to French toast, but we recommend it over a good old fashioned buttermilk biscuit. Yet another way to enjoy biscuits and gravy. Southerner check, do you know what I'm about to do with these two ingredients? Cornbread is classically Southern. This recipe calls to heat a cast iron skillet in the oven until smoking, and then adding a stick of butter to the hot skillet and letting it melt before pouring in your batter and baking until the edges are golden and crisp. Now, if you thought this video was about how to make cornbread, you're not completely wrong, but it's what I do with the cornbread that might leave you flabbergasted. Simply crumble it up in a glass and top it with buttermilk for a tasty snack. My papa loved this, and if you're from the South, I bet you know someone who does too. If you have a slow cooker, you can make my exceptionally delicious spiced apple butter. Start with three pounds of mixed apples. Peel, core, and dice into one inch cubes. Add brown sugar, pinch of salt, and the juice of a lemon, toss to coat. Transfer to a slow cooker and set the heat to high for six hours. Add sugar, cinnamon, ginger, cardamom, cloves, stir well. Once incorporated, set heat to low for another four hours. Then blend using an immersion blender or in batches in a regular blender. Allow to come to room temperature before refrigerating for several hours until cold. You can put it on biscuits, toast, or even in a bowl of plain yogurt with some granola. But however you eat it, I know you'll enjoy it. I know y'all know putting salt on watermelon makes it taste better, but did you know you should be putting it on all of these things too? Move over watermelon, you should be salting all of your fruit. Salt is a flavor enhancer, so it makes fruit taste sweeter. Kind of like baking soda and tea, but I'm not getting into that. Next time you mix up fruit salad, try sprinkling it with a little salt. A pinch on peanut butter banana toast or in any smoothie will make it taste 10 times better. So it's okay, be a little salty.